All right, hello everyone. Today we're going to be going over every single legend's perks in Apex, and we're going to be starting with Bangalore. So Bangalore's first set of perks are pretty bad. So the best one out of these ones is definitely going to be the ultimate reduction because her ultimate has a very long cooldown. The Big Bang perk is just pretty bad. And then the other one is the Cover Me perk. This one's definitely the best one because the Refuge perk just heals a tiny amount of health. And the Cover Me perk essentially allows you to see whoever is shooting you, even through smoke as well, as long as your double time is active. Next up we have Revenant. I would definitely go for the tactical cooldown because I'm pretty sure the murder machine um, ability is a little bit broken right now. And I would absolutely go for the Grim Leaper um, ability as well. The fact that you can essentially get your ability again if you knock someone is really good. And this is very similar to a lot of other characters' abilities as well. And now we also have Ash once again. The murder machine perk seems to be quite broken. Or if it does work, it's pretty underwhelming. So we're going to go for one minute to live, which is actually already pretty good. Uh, and we're also going to have the greedy snare. I'm pretty sure this one's the best one to go for. Because you essentially have the snare as a defensive tool. The twin snares is not that good, really. For Ballistic, the first two perks are really bad. So honestly, you can pick either of these. I would personally go for Ammo Vision. Because obviously you're using three weapons. And also the level 3 perks are also pretty bad, so I would go for the left hand side one where you get an additional tactical. Mad Maggie has some really good perks. Level 2 upgrades, honestly it's quite difficult to choose. If you really like pushing people with shotguns, the left hand side one is the best one. But if you like to be a little bit more, like, do damage before pushing in type of thing, go for the right hand side one. And same for the second one as well, the big drill is actually really good for doing loads of damage, but then the dr drill slinger is really good for essentially playing Watson like Mag Maggie, where you essentially corner off a team into a corner or something, with essentially two different drills. Pathfinder also has a bit of a challenging one for the first one, it's pretty bad, but all you basically do is you get, you get access to... Survey Beacons or Ring Consoles. Survey Beacons is more for Pub Stomp and Ring Consoles more for Ranked. And for the, this uh, level 3 perk, I would definitely go for the Down and Away where you refresh your grapple on Nox. The Zipline Zen is pretty underpowered for what the Zipline can actually do for you anyway. So once again, we have Big Bang for Fuse. Pretty bad perk, so what we're going to do is we're going to go for Scar Tissue, which is already overpowered. If you read that description, it's really good. Um, and also I would go for the Knuckle Hustler, essentially you get a speed boost when you hit someone with the Knuckle Cluster, so go for the two on the right. For Wraith, the first perks are actually quite difficult to choose from. The tactical cooldown is obviously very good, but I've also heard that the Sixth Sense perk is also really good for um, essentially telling your squads that there's a third party, so this is a bit up in the air. And same for the level 3 perks, the fast phase is really good, but remember with the ultimate, you get the fast, the even faster phase. So if you get your ultimate more often, then you essentially have the fast phase anyway, in a way. Now we have Octane. For me personally, I like this, uh, the thick skin perk. The, the damage off grenades. When are you really going to be taking loads of damage off grenades? You know what I mean? Um, and as for the last perks, definitely the additional launch pad charge. The other one is just a bit underpowered. Or right, for Newcastle, I would definitely go for the abilities that are not the increased HP. So that would be the Swift Shield, where you're essentially able to make the shield go faster. It goes essentially sprint speed, which is really good for being an actual support person on your team, essentially giving your teammates a shield and making them run at the same speed of them. And I would also go for Miracle Worker as well, where you revive allies with HP regeneration, mainly because the HP of his abilities are already very good as they are. As for Lifeline, her first two perks are pretty underwhelming, um, and you can pretty much choose any of these, but I would probably go for the 20% revive speed, because it essentially gives you, gets your teammates up essentially a second faster, uh, especially pair that with the knockdown shield, it'll be very good. Um, and For me personally, I would go for the uh, care package one, because a lot of the time when you have the self-revive perk, you do get fully killed. For Loba, I would absolutely go for the Black Market range for the first ability, mainly because at the start of the game, you're going to get level 2 on your blue shield pretty easily um, at the very start. So having the increased range allows you to get more items faster for your whole team. For the level 3, though, this is mid-game, so you kind of want to get that improved tactical cooldown. You don't really want to improve your ultimate that much. 
For Mirage, you absolutely want to go get more me for the first perk. This reduces your ultimate cooldown to literally 30 seconds. It's amazing. And for the other one as well, you want to get the Bamboozles refreshed, your tactical. Um, this is really overpowered. And essentially, these two abilities, like these two abilities combined, makes it so it's just so hectic in every single gunfight. So for Bloodhound, the descriptions sound really good for the ones on the right hand side, but they actually are pretty weak when you actually play them. So I would go for the left hand side one on both of them, improving your tactical by reducing this cooldown and double the doubling the duration of the actual scan as well. It'll essentially allow you to do what Bloodhound does best and scan people. So for Gibby, this once again depends on your playstyle. If you're really good with shotguns, go for the shotgun one. If you want to be more of a support, go for the revive. And as for the other one as well, I would go for the baby bubble because having a smaller bubble actually makes it harder for Maggie to hit you with a like a tactical or something because there's less area to actually hit. Plus as well, you get a faster cooldown and you don't really need to use the entire duration of the bubble. So the other one is kind of useless. For Vantage, I would personally go for the Ringmaster one. Having the accessibility of ring consoles, especially for ranked, is actually really good. It also allows you to obviously get additional Evo points as well. So you can actually access survey beacons and ring consoles in the same game. And I would also get the Sharpshooter um, for level 3. Getting another tactical just by hitting someone with a sniper is pretty damn good. As for Sia, this is a very easy choice. You would go left on both of these two abilities. You go long view where you essentially improve the tactical uh, range and then you would also improve the duration as well. The other two are pretty bad movement with the tactical, pretty bad, and also throw range with the ultimate, pretty bad as well. The rampart is a little bit more difficult because obviously you can put your Sheila on cooldown. So I think the cooldown one is pretty redundant. I would probably go for the carry extra ammo per stack. And for level 3, depending on how you play Rampart, if you play level support for your squad, I would go for Amped Reloads. But if you're more pump stomping, trying to get as many kills as you can, I would go for Ramped Up. For Horizon, she's got some really bad perks here for level 2, so I would probably just go for the battery collection one, where you can see more batteries in boxes, because Horizon's pretty good at battery and one on a lift. And for level 3, I would go for the tactical cooldown, because the ultimate has a pretty decent cooldown as it is, so... Doesn't really improve it that much. As for Crypto, I would go for the tactical cooldown, not the ultimate cooldown, because the ultimate cooldown is pretty weak. You kind of want to get that tactical back because it is a very long cooldown. And for the other one, I would improve the EMP and Neuralink range with the network expansion, uh, because this one is actually very... It makes the ultimate huge. And also network, network traffic is pretty underwhelming where you can just scan the banners anyway. For Conduit, very bad level 2 perks. I would go, I would just go for the bigger jam radius um, on the right hand side. And for the other one, I would go for Radiant Transfer, a larger range for your tactical. Because having two tacticals, that might be useful in some instances in ranked when you have two teammates alive. But apart from that, I would always go for the one on the right. So for Watson, I would definitely go for the one on the right hand side. Um, of course, if you play more of a support of Roy, you would go for the one on the left. But the one on the right allows you to get loads of arc stars to throw back at enemies that throw them towards you, which I think is really cool. For level 3, I would go for Power Pylon, essentially doubling the amount of heals and the uh, HP that your pylon has. The only time I would go for the split circuit is if I have loads of ultimate accelerants. For Valkyrie's perks, it's very plain and simple. Go for all of the perks that don't have the jetpack. So I would go for the one on the left hand side for 50% higher Skyward Dive and then the full coverage Missile Swarm. This one's actually really good, it's like a massive area it covers. Now the reason why is because the jetpack is already pretty good for a passive, so you don't really need to improve it that much. For Catalyst this is pretty hard to do for level 2 and level 3, both of them, but I would personally go for Sister Spikes, allowing you to have an additional tactical active on the map. And I would also go for a long veil. I would increase the length, essentially allowing you to rotate further. It doesn't really matter how long it lasts, personally, in my opinion. Obviously, for LGS, I think a lot of people will probably go for the lifetime one instead. Lastly, we have Caustic, and I think this is a pretty easy one. You would go for the one on the right, where you have a essentially a, a massive area of your ultimate. Now, a larger area of effect. And you would go for the one on the left for level 3, where your Nox vision persists for longer, so you're able to see the enemies in your gas for longer as well. 
So hopefully this helped you guys out and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.